Hey there, I'm Melinda Alexander, and I just wanted to um, talk to you guys about something that's been on my heart for about a week. I don't know if it's God that put it on my heart or if it's just the fact that I miss everybody. I miss our talks in Sunday school. I miss our Wednesday night conversations and, and Bible study. I miss our fellowship and, and God's word uh, as Chuck brings it every Sunday morning. I just miss all of it, and uh, and maybe that's why it's on my heart, just to kind of talk to you guys. That maybe I feel helps me feel connected, but either way, it's on my heart, and so I just wanted to share it. Um, as we go through, you know, this the rest of this pandemic and and our quarantine time, and I know that there are stresses. I know that it's crazy. Look, I'm not in your same boat because. Uh, I, you know, how can I be? You've got different circumstances, but I'm definitely in the same storm that you're in. We're, we're riding out the same, the same waves, and um, I know your your boat may may be leaking a little, where mine may be doing a little better, or vice versa. But um, we're struggling in this together, and and we need a little encouragement sometimes. And this is this is what I want to bring to you today. Um, this is going to start off a little bleak, but it gets better. I promise. I need to give you a little backstory to what I want to tell you. Um, it's um, around 600 BC in uh, Judea. Um, it's the time of Ezekiel, the prophet. The Israelites have—they're uh, having a tough time. See, there, there's a couple of major forces that are kind of battling it out for for domination and. The Babylonians are one. They just defeated Egypt, and and they're now kind of the big dog. Their their territory is now um, Syria and and Palestine, which is where uh, Judea is. And the Israelites, they're, they're struggling for power. They they don't want to be controlled and ruled. So of course they rebel a little bit, and that rebellion doesn't doesn't uh, go so well. What it leads to is Jerusalem being destroyed and the temple being destroyed and then they're taken to uh, Babylon and put in exile for 40 years. Well, Ezekiel was one of those. God came to him when he was 13 and and gave him the word to, to tell everybody, to tell the Israelites, look, you you have to change. There's, there are struggles coming. And, and, you know, he gave him the words to to warn them about the trials that were coming, the exile, the hardship with the isolation, and then finally getting to return to their homeland. But they don't listen. But, you know, God knows this. They're not going to listen. He tells Ezekiel that they're a sinful nation and they're not going to listen. They've been too wrapped up in, in political ambitions and, um, you know, just um, their, their search for wealth and, and fame and fortune like we all get into and they've forgotten about the uh, the more important things. They've forgotten to take care of those who who are maybe weaker and can't take care of themselves. They've forgotten to look out for each other. And so this leads to exile. And Ezekiel preaches his gloom and doom before it happens. He knows what's coming. And while he's there, he's trying to preach to the Israelites what they need to do in order to return to their homeland. And, um, you know, it just seems dark. But there is so much light in, in what he says, uh, especially in Ezekiel 37. So let me read that to you. It's, it's a passage that most of you know um, is the dry bones, but it gets me every time I read it. Every time I read it, it makes me think of something different and something, you know, just it's just one of those ah passages. Like It's just God's love is in it, and you can just hear it. So I, I'd like to read that for you. It says, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. And then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? <laughs> oh, Sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Um... And then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. And I will put breath into you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. 
So I spoke this message just as he told me, and suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all around the valley. The bones of each body became, came together and attached themselves as a complete skeleton. And then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed over their bodies, and they still had no breath in them. And then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message to say that this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message that he commanded and breathed and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. And then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. And then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. This is what happens. Oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. This is so inspiring to me. If you are not a Christian, this should just be amazing to you. Um, I know that before I accepted God into my heart, sometimes I felt lost and just, you know, I, something was missing. And it was the breath of God. He will breathe it into you if you just come to him and confess your sins. Confess that he is Lord of everything. And you get down on your hands and knees and ask him with your heart, all your heart, to come into you and change you and make you a new creation. He will breathe that breath of life into you that makes you new and whole and living again. And if you are a Christian, it means just as much. It means that when you feel like all hope is lost because of the situation that you're in, God is there and all you have to do is put away the sin that, that you've you've been living or, or the pridefulness that makes you want to just stay so independent and do everything yourself and just come to God and just get close enough to Him him to breathe that breath of life back into you and renew you to a new creation and bring you home to him because that's that's our goal in life as a Christian is to become closer and closer to God and just think the closer you get to someone that the more you can feel that that warmth from them and that breath from them how amazing as you grow in Christ and grow grow in your love for God, that you feel that love and that breath, that breath of life that he has for you. So, um, you know, Ezekiel spoke these words, but it, it wasn't just to the Israelites. It's to us as well, because um, when Jesus sent his disciples out um, to, when he sent them out to preach the word on his behalf, in John 20, 22, it says that he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit is what he said. He breathed on them like God told Ezekiel to uh, tell the, the four winds, to call the four winds to breathe in these dry bones. When we're saved, we get that breath of life. Sometimes we back up too far. We can't feel that anymore. You know, we'll, some of the darkest times I've ever had is when... Um, you know, maybe maybe I wasn't living life bad. I wasn't being very uh, sinful, but at the same time, there's sin there. Like, I, I'm not going to go into my testimony right now, but or, or, or tell you about specific things. But there was a time in my life when I harbored some anger towards someone. They they done me wrong, and it, it wasn't my fault. But those were the darkest times I've ever gone through, and it was not because. Um, it really wasn't because of what they had done to me. It's because I couldn't forgive them for it. And that lack of forgiveness, that sin, because God tells us we're to forgive, that that sinfulness of holding on to that separated me from God. And it made it dark and, and scary and just depressing. And so um, I just want to encourage you, if you are going through just this 
you know, I, depression is a good word, depression or, you know, from this isolation or you're not working, you're not, you know, you feel like you're struggling or maybe you're just, you're just lonely, you want to be around people, whatever your situation is, no matter how hard it is, you feel like it's getting to be, just know that you are not alone in this. God is with you. And uh, if you will just get on your hands and knees and just crawl up to him if you're a Christian and, and just allow him to breathe that breath back into you, your situation may not change immediately, but you will have a peace and comfort in that situation that you, uh, you didn't know you could have. It's amazing what God does for you. Sorry, we have dogs. Um, God is always there for you. He's always waiting to just wrap you up and, and help you through anything if you will allow him to. And if you're not a Christian, as I said earlier, it's as simple as, as confessing your sins and um, just realizing that God is Lord of everything and asking him into your heart. And if you're not sure that you understand that, call somebody at the church. You know, they'll, they'll be happy to tell you. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. But don't let the opportunity uh, to have that that joy that God brings and that comfort that he brings um, pass you by just because you're too stubborn to do it or you know there's so much going on right now how can you possibly take time to to stop and do this how can you not how can you not take time to ask the God the only God the one and only the creator of this earth the creator of you to help you um, he's amazing. This is his word. It's, it's truth. It's not a story. Don't tack it away in your brain as some, you know, cool fantasy or cool fiction that you can pull out when it makes you feel good. Like your favorite quote from your favorite movie or book. This is God. This is him in written form. This is truth. It is the beginning and the end. Um, I never never told my kids um, Bible stories. When I would teach in church, I would never tell them, I want to tell you a Bible story. I would tell them, I wanted to tell them a Bible truth or, you know, a Bible passage because I wanted them to understand that this is not a Disney book. This is true and real and it is the answer to what ails you. It really is. God's word will uh, rejuvenate you and make you new whether you're a Christian or you're just, um, and, and you're struggling or whether you're, you're lost in this world and don't know where to turn, God's word has the answers. They have never been wrong and they will never be wrong. Um, he's just the great I am. We're children of God and, and we need to know this. We need to know his word. We need to want to share it. We want to you know, uh, if you if you have him in your heart and you've seen what he can do for you, don't you just want to tell others about that? I do, but um, I, I just just wanted to take time to tell you about Ezekiel and the Valley of Dry Bones. Don't be those dry bones. If you're feeling like those dry bones, just go to God in prayer. Give him your problems. Quit being prideful. Quit being selfish. Quit thinking that you can do things all by yourself. God loves people to get up and do things on their own. But he wants you to give it to him. Just because you take initiative for something doesn't mean that, that you can't put it at God's feet as well. Um, we're not to go in this world alone. We were made to be with him. And really, that's just what I wanted to tell you. I hope it helps somebody. And um, if not, it, it sure helped me. I feel a little bit closer to everybody. I miss you guys, and I can't wait until we can all hang out together at Sunday school and at church. So um, I'm praying for everyone, and I hope you're well. Bye.